Hey everyone, so whether you are just getting started with toy photography, you are a toy photography veteran, or you haven't even started yet, this is the ultimate video to get you on your toy photography journey. My name is Jared Middleton and I am a toy photographer. Uh, I've done a little bit of work for uh, Disney, for Mountain Dew, and some other small companies as well. Uh, but online you might know me as Sir Dork. For this video specifically, we're going to have a very basic walkthrough and an introduction to toy photography. What is toy photography? What is it all about? How do you do it? And everything you need to know, really. So yeah, I'm a toy photographer, but what is toy photography? Toy photography is, is this very, very unique and awesome hobby or art form where you can literally bring your favorite characters from whatever fandom or fantasy to life. These characters that you've grown up with or you've recently fell in love with, you can bring them to life which is really only possible through toy photography. Whether you're a 10 year old kid that just has a bunch of toys lying around or you are a full grown adult collector with action figures all around you, this is for you. But when you get down to it, yeah, toy photography is taking pictures of toys. It's just as simple as that. But when you add things like creative lighting and practical effects and just the coolest setups ever, you're really making these action figures look like they're real, looks like real life. Whether you're recreating scenes from your favorite movie, or you're taking these characters and putting them in a situation they've never been in before, or mixing them together in this alternate universe that is just so awesome. There are literally unlimited, endless amounts of things you can do with this, which is why toy photography is so cool and so much more addicting than you know. So how did I start? How did I start toy photography? Well, I definitely didn't start out as some kind of professional photographer that had a bunch of action figures lying around and then just set them up and did it. Not even close. I've been doing it for quite a few years, but it really just started out as something I did randomly when I got a new action figure or I got a new toy and I posted it on Instagram and I wanted to show off to the world and say, hey, cool, check out this sweet new action figure I got. And the next time I got it, you know, I want to take a picture of him outside. I want to take a picture of it doing this in a cool pose and then eventually I kept doing it over and over and over posting it on Instagram posting it online and every time I did it the photo got more and more creative and a little bit cooler and then eventually I cared about the photos more than I did the actual figures themselves but one of the things that really made me get into it and one of my favorite things about it is this massive toy photography community that exists online primarily on Instagram but all over the place. There's hundreds of people on there taking photos, doing what they love, posting it online, seeing others doing it as well, supporting each other, motivating each other, and learning from each other. And it's really, really an amazing, awesome community to be a part of. And I actually really enjoy looking back at these old photos of mine when I first started doing, when I first just started snapping a quick photo of this new Dragon Ball Z figure I got in the mail or something like that because I can really see some progress. Back then I had no idea what I was doing and you know what, that was okay. I had no clue what I was doing. I had a phone and I had an action figure and that's really all I needed. But I was still able to do it and I look at my pictures nowadays and I'm like, wow, I really have come a long way. And that's really just from doing it over and over, practicing, watching other videos, behind the scenes videos, learning from other people and just loving the art so much that I just kept improving, kept trying new things, kept experimenting and then I kind of got to where I am now which is a place where I always want to learn and do more but I'm so much happier with the work that I'm creating now just because I love it so much, just because I'm having so much fun. I love to show the old photos and the new photos together side by side so then I can see, wow I came from that or someone else can see that and be like, wow, if you started from that point, that's really cool. That gives me a lot of hope to know that, oh, maybe I can 
you know, work hard to get to that point as well. If I tried to tell you what the best or my, what my favorite part about toy photography was, we would be here forever and I would just, I wouldn't be able to shut up. There really are just so many great things about, about what it is. And first of it being, it doesn't matter what skill level you are, it doesn't matter if you've never taken a photo before in your life, you've just been snapping pictures of your dog with your phone, or if you have a background in photography, or you took one class in college on photography, or you have you know, an old camera lying around that someone gave you that you haven't used yet, or whatever, it doesn't matter what skill level you are, it's for you. You could go and with phones, smartphones nowadays, you can take the most gorgeous photos with just a click of the button, just like that. And you don't need to have any fancy equipment either. You can go outside, you have the sunlight, which is free. You have all the outside elements that are all free. Uh, and you got, and as long as you have any kind of toy, any kind of action figure, doesn't matter if it's a $2,000 sideshow collectible or if it's a McDonald's toy you had when you were a kid, you can go outside or inside and you can take some really cool photos and make a really cool piece of art with just the stuff you have. So that's why I say this art form really is for everyone. And it also doesn't matter what your interests are. You could be a massive horror fan, you could be a big anime fan, you could be a huge comic book nerd, you could be a sci-fi fanatic, you could be literally any of those things. You could be a, a sports fan, they make even basketball player action figures. I've seen some amazing work of people doing sports inspired toy photography as well. Doesn't matter what you're into. You, chances are there is some kind of really cool toy or action figure or something miniature that exists that you could take a photo of and make it look lifelike. Uh, and that's just, that's the joy of it. Doesn't matter what the heck you're into. Chances are you can do this. Also, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter where you want to shoot. You can do this. Some people are massive indoor toy photographers and will set up inside and take it on their kitchen floor and set up all this cool stuff around them, use these really amazing dioramas, or even put these characters in funny position, pouring a drink for themselves inside your kitchen or something. And you could, you could set up these entire scenes inside that look like you're shooting on in the Dagobah system in Star Wars. You know, you can do any of that all right inside of your home. Doesn't matter what you have, you can figure it out. Household items can turn into stuff. You can use flour and it looks like snow. You know, there's, <laughs> there's endless amounts of things you could do inside and that's that. But hey, if you like to be outdoors more, if you're more of an outdoorsy person, even better, you can shoot outside. You can go out, you have a free giant ball of fire in the sky that gives you lighting on different times of day that makes things look great. You have little sticks all over the place probably that can look like trees when you stick them in the ground. You have puddles on the ground after it rains that will look really great. You know, and it looks like a, a pond or rain or whatever. Doesn't matter where you live. You could live on the most beautiful blue beaches and have this amazing tropical scenery to shoot with. You could live in the mountains and have this beautiful mountain. You could live in the suburbs and shoot in your apartment complex. I live in a big apartment complex. All my shots, for the most part, are just in my parking lot. And as long as I set everything up and angle everything correctly, you would never know you're in the parking lot. <laughs>So what's, what's the real value of this art form, of this hobby? It's a little bit weird, you know, you're taking pictures of a toy. What's the real value here? But you can go into this hobby, start doing it, no matter what your goals are. If you just want to do something and have fun, do something with your massive collection that you have lying around. You know, do something with the, the, the bins of figures you have, you know, in the garage. Just to do something with them because they're taking up space. There you go. If you want to decorate your walls, take some photos, print them out. Decorate your man cave or your nerd room, go right ahead. Or hey, what if you want to get in touch with other like-minded, cool individuals like yourself on the online and post your pictures and get in touch with other toy photographers in the big toy photography community and talk to people like yourself and share with them and learn from them. There's that too. Or if you're already an existing photographer and you're kind of bored shooting landscapes and shooting portraits, but you want to do something fun to do, there you go. Or hey, what if you have a future career in mind? What if you, what if you want to turn toy photography into your career? What if you want to make money from this one day? I mean, 
there's a lot of different things out there that need promotional images or they need photography for their action figures or companies that need this kind of thing. Those opportunities exist. They're all over the place. The skill of shooting toys and shooting small things and taking photos and getting these brilliant images, there's so much value to that. So many businesses and companies, whether they are a photography lighting company, whether, whether they are a actual toy company, whether it's just like a, a golf ball company that makes golf balls and they wanna have some high quality images of their golf balls in action. There is so much value to toy photography no matter what your goal is when you're getting started. And that's why toy photography and this art form, this hobby, whatever you want to call it, is so fantastic. And it's, it's taken over my life. And <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. That's how easy it is. So one of the most common questions that I get with toy photography and this kind of thing is what kind of figures do you use? What kind of toys do you use? And that's a really good question because there's no really good answer for that. There really isn't because uh, you can use anything. You can use literally anything you have. You could use some old porcelain statue thing that you found at your grandma's house one time or <laughs> you can use a really cool action figure you got in Japan or something. There's there's so many more. You could shoot an old little $5 Pikachu toy you had since when you were a kid. Or you could shoot this $90 amazing Yamaguchi Revoltek figure from Japan, also of Deadpool. Or you could go to your local Walmart or your local Target and pick up a Hasbro Star Wars Black Series figure for 20 bucks. They got so many of them. Stormtrooper, Luke, or you could take one of those $20 figures like this and you could customize it and make it into whatever the heck you want. Like this, one I painted one time. I literally just turned him into a camo trooper by painting him. Or, you know, if, you're, if you really want to go that far, you could grab a $250 Superman Hot Toys figure. That is one of my most prized possessions. <laughs> you could shoot with that. Whatever amount of toys, brands, and companies, and figures that you think exist, Trust me, there's probably six times that many. <laughs> so I have an idea of a shot that I want to take, and it's kind of uh, ambitious, I guess, but um, not really ambitious all at the same time because you can do whatever the heck you want to do in toy photography. So I'm thinking about The Mandalorian, you know, the, the wonderful Mando from uh, the show that's been out for a little bit and Mando's walking along like usual he's got Baby Yoda in the little egg cartridge thing on his side but it's not Baby Yoda in there it's Pikachu <laughs> on the Mandalorian's belt he's got you know his normal gadgets but he also got a Pokeball on there so <laughs> this weird crossover of Pokemon and Star Wars that you know what is only really possible here in toy photography and that's what's so amazing about it so that's what I got in my head and I think I can pull something off like that because I have the right toys and stuff like that. So I'm going to use this figure right here which is my SH Figuart Mandalorian Beskar armor figure. Uh, it's made by a company called Tamashi. They're one of the best brands ever. Uh, they make all kinds of really great figures from all kinds of different things from Star Wars to Marvel to anime to everything. So I definitely recommend checking them out. So I'm going to use him and I also have a little egg cartridge thing that usually would have Baby Yoda in it but instead of Baby Yoda I'm gonna put my little Pikachu right on here. And I'm also gonna use this tiny little Pokeball that I have from another figure. And I'm gonna use a little bit of Sticky Tack, which is a very, very useful tool. A little bit of blue Sticky Tack, or Thumb Tack, whatever stuff you wanna call it. And I'm gonna stick it right on his belt, just like this. And then, boom, now he's a cool little Pokemon trainer. <laughs> So one of the most important things about toy photography and setting up a toy photo is posing your action figures and really taking the time to get them in a pose because just that pose alone is going to decide whether or not your action figure looks like a toy or if it looks like a real person. If it is posed so naturally and perfectly that it looks like a real person, it's gonna pull off and sell the whole photo so much better. Everything else is important too, but the posing 
is so huge and key and it, it can really make or break your photo. So I'm gonna take as much time as I need to pose this Mandalorian figure in a pose, a, just like a natural walking pose and make sure he actually looks like he's really walking and not just like... Okay, so after a while, I think I got him in the pose that I want him. He's, he looks very natural, he's walking along, he's got one foot in front of the other, you know, his hands are moving too, and he looks kind of natural. He looks good, like he's actually walking. So, uh, I think he's ready to be shot now. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take my figures outside and with a couple little pieces of equipment, and I'm gonna use you know, the natural sunlight. Towards the end of the day, when the sun gets down a little bit, the lighting gets really, really nice and perfect for toy photography, so I'm gonna use that lighting to my advantage as well. Uh, I'm gonna go set it up outside, and uh, I'm gonna take the photo, so let's go. All right, so I'm heading outside, and as you can tell, this isn't the most beautiful scenic location, but uh, we're gonna make it look like it is a scenic location, um, just with you know some, camera framing, some lighting, and this spot right here, there's a lot of great moss on the ground, which I really love, and the sun is setting, and that makes some really cool lighting, and I got some figures here that I'm bringing outside, so I'm gonna get set up and then get started. So the camera I'm using is a Canon 250D. It's fantastic, and it's got a little swiveling screen, which I really love, and it's very helpful, um, but, that doesn't mean you have to be using a camera of this caliber. This isn't even a super expensive, relatively expensive camera. You could be using anything you got. You could use an old digital camera that you've had for a while. You could be using your phone. Whatever works. This is just one that has proven to be pretty useful for me, especially with the swiveling screen. If I'm going to be putting things on the ground while I'm shooting, yeah, it's very, very helpful. And no, it's not blue. <laughs> it's just got a little rubber skin on it that I like to... Uh, use and hopefully protect my camera from the elements I'm putting it through outside that kind of thing and I have it on a little mini tripod which is very useful for putting on the ground and being at ground level and uh, it's a Monfrotto tripod and it does allow me to get very very low to the ground which is exactly what I want and using a tripod is very useful because you can set your camera down you know get it in the position you like it in and then set yourself up boom 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 without having to hold your camera it's very 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 useful and sometimes if you want to shoot with like a very slow shutter you don't want any shaky camera with your hands so that's why using a tripod is very very important so i definitely recommend using a tripod it doesn't necessarily mean you have to but i recommend it and sometimes you can get some tripods for real cheap as well so that's what i'm going to be using right now but uh, I'm gonna get started with setting up. So I have the sun facing this way, and I'm actually gonna set up with my camera facing this way, which means the figure's back is going to be facing the sun. So when you have the sun or whatever your light source is coming through from the back of your figure, you really get some cool kind of rim edge lighting most of the time and really can change, and it's a very small difference, but can really change the way your photo looks. You know, thinking about how creative your lighting is, kind of like how right now, <laughs> you got some creative half lighting on my face, dark, bright, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing can be and seem like it's a very minuscule thing to think about, but it changes everything. So because of the way I have Mando posed like this, he's probably not going to just stand up so easily. So that's why I have a little wire, I use these almost in every single shoot, just to give him a little bit of extra balance, some little bit of leverage to lean on. Sticking the wire in the ground, it's going to lean right against it, just like this, and there we go. So the egg carriage thing from Pikachu, yeah, it's got a big plastic little clear thing, so that's probably going to not look so great in the photo. So, as well as the wire, I'm going to take this photo with post-processing in mind, so later on I'm going to edit this out. So I always think about my post-processing, my editing, before I'm setting up as well, because uh, editing and post-processing is a pretty big deal too. We'll go over that later. So I brought a couple other little Pokemon figures out with me as well. I got a Snorlax, Togepi, and a couple Bulbasaur's. So I'm just gonna kinda set them up in the background of the photo, just to add a little bit of detail. 
So I'm gonna set them up and see how it looks. So I have this nice little light reflector thing here. It is perfect for sticking the sunlight exactly where you want it. So you can see it's reflecting the sun bouncing off just like this. So if I hold it towards my fingers, you can probably tell how much brighter they get when I have it off and on. It's very useful for pointing and bouncing the sunlight exactly where you want it. So if you got the sun bouncing off here and it's a little too dark because you know the sunlight is right behind just like this if you want to bounce a little bit put it in the front of the figure too boom just like that it's fantastic and i use it all the time these things are super cheap on amazon highly recommended so everything is set up exactly the way i want it so i'm going to take the photo and then i'm going to take pikachu out and take another photo so then I can Photoshop everything just so perfectly so it'll look like Pikachu is floating without anything holding him up. And that'll be great. So let's go ahead, take the shot. Okay, so the photo is taken. And basically, that's all that needs to be done. You just set up and take a photo. But editing is also very important as well. You can turn a really cool, just like raw, basic photo and enhance the colors, take a couple things out and make it go from really good to just really great. Uh, and you know what? I use fo uh, Adobe Photoshop for my photos and that can be a little pricey, but hey, at the same time, you can go and get some great free apps like Adobe Lightroom or uh, Adobe Photoshop Fix all on your phone for free and you can do basically all the same stuff that I'm going to do in this photo and it's that easy and okay yeah I used a somewhat fancy camera I used some wires uh, I used quite a few different things in my shot you know you can start out and just use a phone any camera whatever figure you got and then later on if you save up and you get yourself some nicer gear even better I started out with just a phone I started out with just a couple basic figures I didn't use wires or the light reflector but if you want to step up your game just a little bit and make your photos go just a little bit better that's when you can step up and get some of the nice stuff like the tripod the light reflector the wires even though all this stuff is pretty cheap you know you can spend 50 bucks and get all this stuff that I just used right now
So the photo came out actually pretty cool, and I'm really excited about it. I think it's uh, came out pretty. But in what world would you see the Mandalorian Pokemon trainer walking around with Pikachu? <laughs> Only in the the world of toy photography, and that's just the beginning. There are literally endless possibilities with toy photography, and that is why. It is so fantastic. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was insightful. I hope you learned a little bit. I hope you get inspired. I'm Jared Middleton, Sir Dork. Hopefully I will see you soon.